Hey y'all, I'm Matt Byrne, and in this week's lab, we'll be going over the motion of falling bodies and specifically paying attention to the drag force on an object as it falls directly down on the y-axis on just a 2D plane. So we'll be evaluating how the object's drag affects it in free fall. And specifically, we'll be paying attention to a 3D system, but only on the 2D plane. And uh, in trying to find why the drag force affects it as it goes through the air, uh, we have an object that is not like a rock or a tennis ball that would fall directly down, uh, kind of regardless of its surface area and compared to the air. Uh, in this one, we have a tissue. And with this, we'll be noticing how it has a much higher drag coefficient compared to a rock or a tennis ball. And to understand this, understanding free fall comes when it accelerates downwards with a constant acceleration. And when it's near the Earth's surface, it, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. And the force of drag is relative to the surface area on an object, and it's most commonly in the direction opposite of motion. And in this case, it is. And in an object's position versus time graph, which we will be evaluating for the GlowScript program, um, should be much less curved than if it was just going flying directly through the air, regardless of drag. So drag should slow it down much more and have a higher time. Therefore, the change in momentum wouldn't be as much. So for this lab, I use the napkin as my falling body. And with other labs, again, it's the camera, the computer with the necessary software to run what I need. And here we have the video itself of uh, the napkin falling through the air. And it's a short clip that involves uh, the object just falling directly downward. And through the tracker software, I ended up coming with this graph to plot its motion. And of course, it's a scatter plot, so it shows each position at a given time. And then this is the parabolic line of best fit to line up all of the points. And you can see how it kind of is a very obtuse curve and uh, it doesn't sharply fall down like you'd expect something like a rock to fall. But in theory, a rock would fall something like this. Of It just goes straight down. Even though this line kind of has a curve to it, it's only because of the acceleration. It's truly falling just at a straight line. And a velocity versus time graph would show that. And same for with a drag force, the object is uh, a little bit more lengthened. So you can see definitely on the x-axis where it ends, where this one is coming to a close about 0.91. This one is coming to a close way past that, where at 0.9 it was still at about the 5 meter mark, and at 0.9 right here it's at the 4 meter mark. So you can definitely tell the difference. And side by side, that's when you can really see how the drag draws it out. And some of the reasons for this are because, as discussed, with a tissue, it has a higher surface area. And therefore, it's not going to fall through the air as fast. And that's why for the terminal velocity, the best model is the one that includes drag, because it shows how fast an object truly can go relative to the drag placed on it. An object such as a rock is going to accelerate, in theory, until it hits an object that's going to stop it, such as the ground. But an object that has a drag force on it will create terminal velocity. That's the definition of terminal velocity. And if the object were to be initially thrown down, and this one, the best example, is a tennis ball, it's not going to reach its terminal velocity slower than the other rock that just is stopped, dropped at a standard height. It may reach it faster, but both rocks are going to reach terminal velocity. Nothing is going to change it, even though terminal velocity is the same. It is the fastest an object can go regardless of any other variables.